In this video, we're continuing our work with complex numbers. So let's look at example A here. We have 1 minus i raised to the second power. You could actually evaluate this by using your shortcut pattern to square a binomial, but I'm going to actually just write it down twice and go ahead and FOIL it. So we'll have 1 times 1, which gives you just 1. And then we'll have 1 times negative i, which will give you minus i. Then from there, we'll have i times 1, or negative i times 1, I should say. So you'll get another negative i. And then you'll have negative i times negative i, which is going to give you a positive i squared. Now from here, we'll combine like terms. So these two negative i's can come together as just minus 2i. And then we have to remember that i is actually equal to the square root of negative 1. So if you square the square root, you'll end up with just negative 1 coming out from underneath the radical. So this plus i squared is the same as saying plus negative 1 or just minus 1. And then at that point, the 1's will cancel out, and you just get the answer, negative 2i. So this solution is just negative 2 times i. All right, let's look at example b now. We have i to the 17th power. So they don't want us to actually work that out by hand fully. They want us to kind of think about the pattern of exponents on i, and then to think about what the result would be for something larger like i to the 17th. So when I say pattern, what I mean to say is essentially, we know that i is equal to just the square root of negative 1. That's i to the first power. Well, we also know that i to the second power is just negative 1, because we talked about the fact that you're squaring the radical. That removes the radical, and so you end up with just negative 1. Now, if we had i to the third power, that's basically the same as i squared times i, right? So in other words, that's going to be i squared, which is negative 1, times i, so we just have negative i. And then finally, if you have i to the fourth power, you're going to end up having basically i squared times i squared. And if they're both i squared here, then they're both negative 1. So it's negative 1 times negative 1, or just positive 1. So i to the fourth power is just 1. Now when you go to the next power, i to the fifth, you're basically just repeating the cycle. Because we know that i to the fourth is just 1, and i to the fifth is i to the fourth times i. And if i to the fourth is just 1, this is basically the same as 1i. And 1i, of course, is just i to the first. So when you get to this fifth power, you're basically repeating back. So it's kind of like a circle or a cycle. One way to handle these problems, then, is to just think about how many times evenly 4 can go into the exponent. Because i to the fourth is just 1, right? So in other words, I can write this i to the 17th as i to the 16th times i, right? That's correct, right? Because i to the 16th times i to the 1 power would be the same as i to the 17th because you'd keep the base and add the exponents, correct? And if that's the case, then I can simply say that i to the 16th is really just the same as 1, and it'll be 1 times i. And again, why can I do that? Because 16 is a power that 4 would go into evenly. So the rule here is simple. It's just saying, hey, look, if you can write it as i to a power that's divisible by 4, then that whole part can just be removed as a 1, and whatever is left over is going to be the answer. So in case i to the 1 is just going to be the same as just i, right? And our answer is i for this problem. In example C, you have i to the negative 25th power. All right, well, first thing we'd do is probably write that as a positive exponent. So 1 over i to the 25th power. Remember, if I bring it down below the fraction bar, it changes the sign of the exponent. So i to the 25th power in the denominator then. And then from there, I just think, well, you know, I can write that if I want to as 1 over i to the 24th times i. And again, 24 is something that's divisible evenly by 4, right? That's 6 times 4. In other words, I could literally write that if I wanted to as 1 over i to the 4th power, right? Raised to the 6th power times i. And of course, we know that i to the 4th is just 1, and 1 to the 6th power is just 1, so we're going to end up with just 1 over i. And that's your answer. All right, so when you look at d, you're going to say, hey, that's 7 i to the third is i squared times i, right? And then it'll be minus 3, and we can write i to the fifth as i to the fourth times i. And then we know i squared is just negative 1, so we're going to put that as a negative sign out in front of here. 
So I have negative seven i, and then minus three times i to the fourth. Well, i to the fourth is just one, so it's just gonna be minus three times i. And now we can combine these because we'll say, hey, look, you got negative seven i and minus three i, that's gonna give you negative 10 i. And that's your answer for example D. All right, now let's do E, the final example here. It looks like we have a radical and then two binomials being multiplied underneath the radical. If you look carefully, we actually have a special product underneath the radical. We actually have the difference of two squares because the only thing different about these is that they have a different sign for two. In other words, if I rewrote it in this way, you'll see that they're basically the same except for the sign in the middle. So if I have two plus three i in one of them, and I wrote the negative two plus three i, you can see that the only real difference is the sign in front of the two. Okay, so then we know we just have to do basically the product of the first terms and the product of the second terms. So that's gonna end up giving me the square root of, well, two times negative two is just negative four, and then we're going to have three i times three i, which is gonna give you positive nine i squared. Now from there, we can write the i squared as a negative one, so we'll have minus four minus nine, because the i squared here becomes a negative one. So negative one times positive nine gives you negative nine. And then we end up with the square root of negative 13. Now, at that point, we really can't do much other than say that that can be written as the square root of negative one times 13. And, and that's the same as the square root of negative one times the square root of 13. And then of course you can see from that it's just the same as saying i times the square root of 13. All right, let's talk about the answer that we found in problem C just briefly. So we had this one over i, and I just wanna mention that a lot of times professors will want you to rationalize this fraction. So one over i, remember, is the same as one over the square root of negative one. So normally we rationalize denominators by multiplying by the same square root that's in the denominator already. So that's going to end up giving you negative square root of negative one times the square root of negative one, which we know is just gonna end up giving us what's underneath the radical or negative one. And then we have one times the square root of negative one, which is the square root of negative one. Now, from there, we can say that the square root of negative one is just i, and if i is divided by negative one, that's just gonna give you negative i. So you can rewrite the answer in C as simply negative i you get the exact same result as before, but it's written in a different format. You've basically rationalized the answer.